Hi there, my name is Will and welcome back to a deep dive of workflow components. Today we're going to be having a look at tasks and all of the properties associated with them. Let's jump into an example. There are two types of tasks in Kestra, flowable tasks and runnable tasks. Flowable tasks control the orchestration logic, that's stuff like conditional branching, loops and so on. Whereas runnable tasks perform the computation, that's stuff like your scripts and commands. Let's have a look at a few examples to get our head around that. Jumping right in, we can have a look at this flowable task that is going to have an if statement and depending on the condition, we'll run a log. So here it's going to take an input of a Boolean and it's going to then output whether it was true or false. So if I execute this and then pass it true, we should see it run the true task and we do. And when I run the false one, again, we'll see it run the false. Really, really helpful if you want to be able to control what happens during your flow, depending on the output of a previous task. We can also do this with a switch statement. So you can have your cases here and then the outputs that you might expect. Again, I'm using the same Boolean example. So if I put true in, we'll see that it outputs the true one. And if I run the false one, we'll see the same thing again. So yep, as expected. You can also take that one further and run things sequentially and in parallel. So here I can actually see that this one's going to group these two tasks together and run them back to back. Useful if you're trying to organize your flow. And so here I can see it's going to execute them as expected back to back, but I can do this also in parallel if I wanted. So I can have these two tasks run at the same time. If I run this, you can see in the Gantt chart, it's gonna run the first and second at the same time and then afterwards run the last task. So lots of really powerful options there to give you all of the power that you need. Now on top of that, there are loads of pr uh, properties that are both required and optional in Kestra as well. So every task needs to have an ID and a type, and depending on the type, there'll be some additional um, required properties as well. Uh, in this example here, I've got a simple log message and the log message itself has two properties and we can see those by clicking into the documentation. It's got a level and a message property. Neither of these are required, so you don't actually need them, but uh, those are the two things you can add to make the log do exactly what you need. On top of that, every task has the following optional properties. That includes a description, really helpful if you want to describe your tasks to others, retry, which will have a separate video on, but that it defines on if this task was to fail, how many times it should retry, how often, in what sorts of pattern, and so on. On that same sort of idea, there's also timeout to stop your task from running for too long. If it's a computational based task and it's, oh, you, you know, if it's gonna run for too long and it's probably failed or something, then you can tell it to just fail the task and quit. Useful if you're trying to save server costs and you don't want things to run too long. There's also disable property, super useful if you want to be able to control whether a task is going to run without having to completely remove it from your flow. There's also a log level. So depending on all of the different outputs that it will produce in the logs, uh, what sort of level that will come out at. And then lastly, allow failure. So this is useful if you want to be able to control uh, whether this task will cause the entire flow to fail if it fails or if it can just skip over. So this is quite useful for logs because in reality, if a log fails, it's probably not going to impact something downstream. But for tasks that are gonna generate outputs, it is important that those fail the task and the whole flow because they will cause future tasks to fail as well. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview into what tasks can do in Kestra. Let us know what you think in the comments and in our Slack community. Next episode, we're gonna be talking about namespaces and how you can organize your flows.